find a shade where we can. Uh, you drive around that terrain is going to play a huge uh, factor in this battle. Because if you just go so much as a couple hundred yards or even a hundred yards in any direction, the terrain looks completely different. So, um, I'd like to start by going over some terms we're going to be discussing here to make sure we're all on the same page. Um, and I'd like to start with the uh, army structure, really basic talk on um, these bodies of troops we're going to be discussing today. You're going to hear me refer to corps and divisions and brigades and regiments and so on and so forth. So I have my assistant here pass out a little handout here. Simply put, uh, word back then did not travel any faster than a man could run or a horse could get. Uh, so you physically, if you wanted to tell somebody something, you're a general, you're going to have to have a aid. Take down what you want to say, write it down, send them off in the direction of where you think that person might be. And then he's got to hopefully get there in one piece, and he's got to find the person. So all this to say, uh, word did not travel quickly going to see over the course of this tour how it, this battle devolves very quickly into a very disorganized affair. Um, by the time the guns start on the morning of September 17th, uh, Lee and McClellan just have very little to do with it. It's used, uh, it was used, as an educational tool. You see, when uh, the battlefield was first preserved, uh, Antietam is one of the first five Civil War battlefields preserved uh, by the federal government. And the War Department gained control of a little bit of the land, kind of like the roads and maybe the 10 feet on either side of the road around here. And the War Department actually used this battlefield um, on a number of different occasions to train uh, its officers. The officers would come here from Quantico or West Point, and they'd come here and study the battle. So this is 1896, before we got helicopters, they just built an observation tower. It wasn't your right. You can really get a good sense of how they call it something road. It is really well worn down. If you look at the pictures of the day, uh, some of the after shirts, really pronounced uh, a natural rifle trench, right? Doesn't it make sense? You're defending against 10,000 Union soldiers, there's only 2,500 of you, you get down. This is, plays into that idea we're talking about at the beginning of the tour, with that question I get all the time. How did the Civil War soldiers just stand up and blast away and shut Well, they didn't. Look at these 2,500 Confederates. They're hunkered down in this road. Not only are they hunkered down in the roadbed, but they're going to dismantle the fences on either side of the road. These split rail fences, they take them apart, they pile all the fence rails uh, on this north side of the road, just to add to their protection. Confederate dispatches, right? When General Lee is reporting his troop strength, he is only going to be using combat troops. For instance, the Army of Northern Virginia has about, uh, about 4,000 enslaved people they bring up here. People, cooks and teamsters and uh, doing different camp duties and stuff. Well, Lee obviously is not going to include them in his total troop strength. They're not fighting men. Not used as fighting. The Union Army is going to include troops of all types. So you'll read 80,000, 85, I think I've seen 92,000 for the Union. Um, and that is referring to the amount, the total amount of men under the command of General George McClellan. Uh, the problem with that is, well, he's got one corps, I think it's back in. Washington, D.C., I believe the 4th Army Corps is back there, nowhere close to the battlefield. He's got the 6th Army Corps out in Pleasant Valley on the other side of this mountain. They're not here. So if we're talking about what troops does General McClellan have, a new General McClellan and General Lee have. We're talking 35,000 Confederates, 60,000. Over, uh, but here we are at the southern uh, right flank of the Confederate Army. And finally, we get a glimpse of the Antietam Creek. Antietam Creek doesn't look like much, right? It's not very deep, but the point is it's deep enough. Remember, Lee was using it as a barrier between either armies. 
Uh, so you and I could splash across, probably no problem. You know, the water maybe comes up to our bellies somewhere. If you're a Civil War soldier, you're not going to be able to ford that river without taking off all your ammunition, holding it up over your head, all the while the enemy's firing down on you. So you see why it was necessary to cross the Union troops. And there they are. They only fit about four troops and rest on them. Now, General Ambrose Burnside is in command of the Union 9th Corps. 12,000 men on the far bank, um, beyond these trees. These 12,000 men, remember, were ordered to attack across that bridge and smash into the Confederate and to stay back here and take any questions that you might have. And thank you again for attending the program. Thank you for coming to Antioch.